No, 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 don't. Just don't. Please don't. The biggest mistake they could have done with this press release was this line right here. Where is it? Here. With a special focus on highlighting great games coming from some of our beloved Japanese publishers. So this is what's going to happen. I, I guarantee you some variation of this is going to happen. Somewhere in the middle, but possibly at the end, the logo Square Enix is going to come up and everyone's going to go, like, ooh, ah, oh shit, Final Fantasy 16. And then it turns out it's an update to Star Ocean The Divine Force. And then we're going to rant and rave on Twitter. It's like, ah, oh, Square Enix, you son of a bitch, you turned against us again. You trolled us. When in truth, we trolled ourselves yet again. Uh, but of course, it doesn't stop there, right? Next state of play, next Square Enix presents. We play the same song and tune dance all over again. And apparently we're fine with it. I put this ga that game completely out of my mind because for the longest time I was thinking about nothing but it. So, uh, sure, I mean, they couldn't have foreseen a lot of the world issues that had uh, happened in the last one and a half to two years and also recently. Also, Forspoken was delayed. Uh, two days ago, they announced, Luminous Studios pronounced that it was going to be delayed for about five something months until like mid-October. And I really don't think, I really, really don't think that 16 is going to be released before that. My expectations are super, super low. Beyond low, like negative low. If 16 isn't even a remote possibility here, then forget about 7 Remake Part 2. The moment you see a Square Enix logo, everyone is going to knee-jerk react. And just like it did with... Um, the unveiling of Star Ocean, the Divine Force. Ha ha ha, you actually thought that 16 was going to show up and it didn't here. If 16 is shaping up to be what I think it's shaping up to be, I have probably waited the longest out of everyone. You probably waited for this game rumors for years, but I think this will be the game that I've waited maybe 27 years, 28 years to, to play. Forspoken, I'm on the fence about that game, the development history. Well, the weird thing about Forspoken is that it seems like it was a, it's a very big deal. They have some very, uh, very triple A talent working on that game. But ever since its announcement, Luminous has been so quiet. There was a hands-off gameplay preview, but that was it. Like, there's almost like nothing. Stranger of Paradise, weirdly enough, has been getting the most press. That game, almost every single day, has been tweeting something. They've released like four public demos already. I think there's supposed to be one after this state of play. Come, oh, it's Arts. Here you go. Don't. Seriously, just don't. Not right now. RPM, uh, that could be... No, it's not. It's not. Oh, shit Hello. confirmed. Can I bridge a spirit sequel? I Ivy, the, android. the fuck? I'd like to share today's dinosaur forecast. Wait. Oh, is this... No, not Dino Crisis, right? That's uh, that's some really, really bad... Uh... Maybe? Show me some red hair. Show me... Oh, shit! It is! It's Dino Crisis! Okay, I'll take this. Uh, that's some... It looks rough, though. Uh, it's an engine, I can tell. Okay, how crazy is this gonna get? We had, like, dinosaurs in outer space already. Oh, my God, don't tell me it's turning to, like, Dino Crisis, like, Contra Force rogue shit. What? Oh my god, no! They turn into a freaking warrior shooter! So it's not gonna be like an RE type of survival horror puzzle solver thing. Yeah, this is Rogue Corpse. Where's the freaking panda <laughs> with the machine gun? <laughs> Wait, Exo Primal? What? Okay. So that's not technically Dino Crisis, so they got off easy. I suspected this too, Ghostwire Tokyo. After the release of Gran Turismo, uh, this one's been getting a bit of press too. This has been a while actually. This kind of evil within meets like Ghost in the Shell. I hope this doesn't turn into another like death loop scenario where whoever made this schedule is like, hmm, I don't think we've had enough death loop. Not enough Ghostwire. No. They've shown you so many of these that Feels like you played the game already. Okay, this is like, is this, enemies are super crazy and cool. I'm not sure about this. It's very stylish. Yeah. 
a la like Scarlet Nexus. Very cool. So each trailer's about like, oh, motherfucker. Okay, I'll take it. They're not, <laughs> they're not holding back. Stranger of Paradise has so far gotten more trailers, more demos, more anything than like some of Square's biggest games. What more can you show us though? Okay, this is the game that got like the 32nd trailer. Later today, let's jump into the world of Forspoken with some all new really? gameplay. But you've shown this already. In the gameplay demo that they showed off, the terrain was kind of rough looking. Let's hope that's changed now. And the face model too. Okay, more dragons. More Athia. I'm actually looking forward to like moving in this game after playing Horizon for so much. Yeah, I think this is not even using a gauge. I think it's all button mapped. Attacks. Why Isekai? How else are you gonna put uh, a Western character in a JRPG? Why Jack? Why Ash? Why Jeb? Why anyone? I weirdly respect Jack as a very anti-JRPG character. He's so unapologetic, yeah. So they pushed it back. Oh, check out those badass PS2 graphics. I have no idea what this game is. Robot FPS, okay. This reminds me a lot of like, like more modern arcade games where it's not just like an arcade, it's like a huge giant booth where players are playing against each other and there's like there's robots and there's shooting. Well, it's just the robots. You don't even get to know the like the pilots. You know, where's Hero? Where's Troa? Where's you know, those guys? Oh, wait, what? Oh, the Shredder's Revenge one? No. I remember playing all these games like 30 years ago, but it's 30 years later. Where's the new game? <laughs> the Kawabunga, oh, so it's not about Shredder's Revenge. It's just a collection. And Konami. Well, there's your Konami. Uh, Godzilla meets the Welk? What? There's a market for these games. There is. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. Goo, 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 goo. This is where most video gamers learn Japanese from fighting games. It's like super hyper comic book ADD type of editing. All right. We got seven minutes left. Six and a half minutes left. 50 playable characters, what the hell? Why so many? Last I checked, it was like 25. Now it's gone up to 50? Another seven years would be 100. Games will take you beyond life and death. Uh, silent crisis? <laughs> is the game called Beyond Life and Death? I don't know, it's, this has got to have some kind of an angle to make it really stand out. Not just samurai, right? Oh, ghost samurais. They're finding zombies and shit? What? Did they show off a Final Fantasy? Yes, they showed it off like multiple times. You missed it completely. Trek to Yomi, just in case you forgot the title. Okay. Starring... Oh, it's an actual person. Maybe some very famous Japanese actors? Okay. Could be a big deal. There's a... Oh, there's Japan's answer to Steven Seagal right there. So far, what's been the highlight? <laughs> Weirdly enough, that primal... Exo primal... Dino Crisis thing? Oh, Fighting. oh. Update to Returnal? Dying. DLC? Returning. I beat that bitch ass Biome 6. Oh, you better have a DLC me. for me. DLC? CLD? PCP? Oh, update. Ascension. Oh, that's interesting. It's almost time to sign off, but before we do, let's get a first look at two brand new games coming from Square Enix. What? Brand new? Is this really what you want? And you were certain that what we are doing is best for the people. Not actual gameplay. What the hell? One nation remained unaffected by the chaos. The kingdom of Please don't say chaos. Please don't say that now. I want this to excite me, I really do. What is this? Oh God. Yeah, it's like SRPG, but it's like real time. If that makes any sense. They said two. Two brand new IPs from Square Enix. The Dial Field Chronicle. I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. There's a Dial Field and there's a Chronicle and... Yeah? I swear to God, like, they put all the games into, like, 
like a random game generator, and then it all like mashes together, and this is what comes out. No, I don't think so. The the forest imagery almost made me think of that, but no. She looks almost kind of out of place in this world. There's a like a a black stroke around her character model. Valkyrie's fall. Valkyrie Elysium. Oh. Oh! Valkyrie Elysium! That was one of the... Your efforts to remain undetected. One of the names that was trademarked Reveal by Square Enix a while back. Probably the same reason why Nintendo just shadow dropped like a... a direct is because they didn't want to give people too much time to get too hyped. But of course leave it to Twitter to like maximize that. So if they had announced this like weeks ahead of time then I think it would have been like 10 times worse. So maybe shadow dropping the announcement was like damage control. There was really nothing uh, of any consequence as we suspected, of course. But the thing is, if they did nothing, then we complain anyways. Like we complain no matter what, unless they give us exactly what we want. See, at first I thought this was Pragmata. Something Pragmata related until, but Pragmata seems a bit more c cerebral. This looks more like action packed. Yeah, he's ready to jump off. And here come the dinosaurs! Right, and we saw this here where they're at their base, and then I thought, well, dinosaurs and Regina? Maybe Dino Crisis? And uh, there, there we go! Right there. See, here's the thing. This game makes the cardinal mistake that a lot of sequels make, is that the first game, dinosaurs were terrifying. So they figured, well, if one dinosaur is terrifying, what about like 10,000 dinosaurs? Isn't that 10,000 times more terrifying? Although to be fair, Resident Evil does the same thing. <laughs> so does Alien and Terminator. So that's that, okay. Ninja Turtles, I thought this was Shredder's Revenge, but that's for the Switch and apparently this is just a collection. Yeah, I don't know, what's the gimmick of this game? You're fighting ghosts and zombies and that's it? It's using that kind of Unreal Engine that like Little Nightmares does. Like how the, the, camera kind of pans along with you as you move through this 2.5D environment, but it's like samurai, which is always welcomed, I guess, but like, where's the, where's the punchline? I guess this is the punchline. You got real world actors, voice actors, maybe, but maybe like Stranger of Paradise, changing. this game felt like, yeah, it could have really benefited from having more than just you playing like one. Yeah, and it fits, it, it, it actually fits well, actually, right, into the narrative of the game, because Selena keeps dying over and over again, and every single now iteration is a different version of her. So now you have, tower. you're fighting with the different versions of her. They Great. Climb, they climb. They're making an already good Challenge game better. Okay, can't argue again. with that. Combat almost immediately made me think of Platinum Games. But keep in mind that we thought the same thing about Babylon's Fall, and we know where that went. She got a grappling hook, she got air dodges, she got air combos. She got a magical neon glowing sword. Another player joining you, I guess. I'm not sure about this. Seems like she's repeating the same five moves over and over again. The art style is sort of like astral chainish, isn't it? There's Tanta Sila. So that's that. Uh, Dial Field Chronicle. Let's watch this again. Maybe we've, we're missing some context. Maybe we're going to pick up something that we didn't see before. Maybe. The problem with these games is that they have to create a whole world for you to explore and get invested into. Asking for you to get invested into a world and characters is a really, really huge undertaking. It's asking for a lot. Now, if you had gameplay like Horizon, then that could justify it because that game allows you to truly, fully explore that world. So that made sense. But this, like, what's this? Are you exploring the world here? It's still like SRPG, sort of like how Final Fantasy XII was still like turn-based, but you can actually move in between, so it's like pseudo-action. It actually sort of reminds me of Fantasian too, in a way, the combat. You're asking for a lot, Square Enix. Every time you release these JRPGs, SJRPGs, you're creating huge worlds and you're asking for a lot of time. Even Triangle Strategy is supposed to be like 50 or 60 something hours. So yeah, so we didn't expect anything and we got everything. Six out of 10? Um, I guess that depends if you're a fighting games fan. I mean, the highlights for me were Returnal, Forspoken we've seen already before, Stranger of Paradise we've seen before, the two Square Enix brand new quote unquote IPs. Yes, they're technically brand new, but 
is the gameplay brand new? 